So now you have a basic understanding of ME subnetworks and how you can share power across a network using these quartz fibers without sharing items across the network. One issue you may notice though is that your subnetwork is only able to hold eight channels, right? Too many channels online and that even counts even if you're using dense cables and that's because this network does not have an ME controller. If I add an ME controller onto there, now we can add up to 32 channels to each side of this ME controller. So by connecting our ME controller up to that quartz fiber, we now have access to way more channels on this subnetwork, and I can have as many drives as I'd like on there, and it's still only going to share power across this quartz fiber. Anything that goes into these will not be shown unless you have the storage bus to interfaces connection that we showed in the last video. Now our next topic is going to be P2P tunnels. Now what we're going to mostly be using is these ME P2P tunnels, but I'm going to explain them using these light P2P tunnels and that'll make sense when I show you this. If I place down this light P2P tunnel and I give it a piece of glowstone or some form of light then I can shift right click with this memory card here and I can set the device configuration to that. I can come down here where it's nice and dark. I can place down another light P2P tunnel and I can link that with the memory card and you'll see that the light from that glowstone shines down here through this P2P tunnel. Well, the same concept goes for ME P2P tunnels. If I take an ME P2P tunnel and I can move this out of the way and connect it up to this ME controller. Now this P2P tunnel, which I can go ahead and set my network card to, is now carrying 32 channels from this side, but we're only using one of the eight channels on our ME smart cable here. So the reason that this is useful is because I can carry this P2P channel across my white ME smart cable here, and it's still only using one of eight channels. I can link this P2P tunnel right there over to there, bring out a smart cable just like this, and then I can have this connect up to say a bunch of ME drives. I can bring these, these can connect up to eight to each other, so I can stack them just like that, and I can add one more to the end of that, and that'll say eight of 32 channels, right? Well, say I wanna add some more of those. I can just bring this up here, and I can add another eight right there, and there we go. Now we're gonna have 16 of 32 channels but we're still only using one of eight channels on our thing right here. And if I want to, I can throw some storage over in these guys. I have some storage drives right here that have stuff in them. I'll just pick some random ones to throw it in and you'll see the items are not gonna show in this network because this is actually our sub network technically here. This is technically the network that all of the items are being stored on here right? Because this is the controller that that's going to because of this P2P network right here. It's carrying the channels from that controller to right here. So if I were to place a terminal on this network, I would be able to see all of those items just like that. To help that make sense, I made it colorful here. We've got dense blue cables right here connecting to all of our drives. And that's the symbol that they are on this network here. Essentially, this network is just our power and channel carrying network. So this will just carry the P2P channels from this network over here. Now, this is when it gets pretty complicated here. This is my main network. This large uh, controller right here is my main network. And that's going to be signified by using a red smart cable here to a terminal. Now, this can be used to carry the channels off of using subnetworks like this. So each one of these controllers is a subnetwork being powered off of quartz fiber here. So each subnetwork has its own color coming off of P2P tunnels. Now these have to have power to be able to use the P2P tunnels. If I break this, now all of these P2P tunnels go dead. These networks go dead. You have to have those quartz fiber right there to be able to power all of these cables. And all I'm doing is quartz fiber like that. And then Fluix ME glass cable right there to power those. And that will bring those networks back up online. Now, what's amazing about this setup is that since we're sending all of these P2P channels into this sub network, I can carry up to 32 of them on one network. So 
with each of these being 32 channels coming off of the main network, I can carry up to 1024 channels across this. And let me show you how that works. Basically, if I want to have a room right here with a bunch of drives, I can have a P2P tunnel that comes off of here, right? P2P tunnel right there. And then I can link that with a memory card, memory card, just like this. And I can select one off of my thing right here. We'll just pick this one there. New configuration created and copied. And then I can paste it right there. And I can grab, actually, I'm going to grab a red dense smart cable because this will now be on our main network up there. So the red one is going to come off of here and I'm going to bring that all the way through here. I've got these sets of drives right here because this is going to be my drive room. I've got four sets of eight, so that's 32 drives. Now I can bring some other cables off of this, some regular smart cables to carry eight channels just like that and then connect them up right there and now this is carrying 32 channels worth of ME drives but we're only using one channel off of our sub network right here and all of those drives will be visible from this terminal right here on our main net and this system is essentially infinitely expandable as many P2P tunnels as you can fit on your main controller you can expand that many channels out and about so say you want to have another room to have your auto crafting set up in, well, all you got to do is set up a P2P channel on your sub network, just like this. This one's pulling from right over here on the green one. It's coming from this network. So all of my auto crafting is set up right here. I've got eight CPUs and a bunch of molecular assemblers, and it's only using one channel on my sub network. So all of that can be controlled from this terminal right there. Well guys, I hope that y'all learned something today. If you do have any questions, feel free to ask. I know this is all very complicated and I'm still learning a lot about this mod as I go. So any questions, I will do my best to answer. As always y'all, take care. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.